A lot of times while working in Power BI, especially while working its tables with Power BI, you're gonna have spillover effects. What do I mean by that? Please take a look. Here I have a simple visual and in the visual I have year, month, the total sales presented. Alongside I also have the YTD presented. Now, if you do take a look at the YTD calculation, it goes on uh, for the times that we have the sales but it also proceeds that. So if you take a look, that for all the months that we do not really have a sale, we also have the YTD present. Now these kind of calculations kind of create a little messy table or messy visual. How can you get rid of such calculations, the spillover effects by a simple DAX trick is something that we will take a look at in this video. All right, we're gonna have fun and some DAX together. Let's start. All right, first things first, I'm here in Power BI. Let's just first try to understand the data model that we have. We'll also take a look at why do these spillover effects happen, and then we will try to fix the problem. All right, if you take a look at over in the model right here, I have two very simple dimension tables. We have the products table and the calendar table. Linked with that is my sales table, nothing that complicated about it. Now, if you take a look at the visual, we have year month total sales in the sales YTD calculation, and I'll quickly show you the sales YTD if you take a look at that. It's a very simple measure, which is nothing but total YTD. Take my total sales and use the calendar date to be able to calculate the YTD. Now, if you take a look at this particular calculation, the calendar table, obviously you understand that, it's going to have all the dates. If you take a look at my sales table, in my sales table, I just have the data up until August of 2012. So if I sort that in the descending order, I just have the data up until 29th of August. But if you take a look at my calendar table, I have the calendar table up until the end of 2012, which is 31st of December. Now, as soon as I write this particular function, which is nothing but total Y to D, and I specify the date within that, it is obviously going to go up till the end of 2012. And that is the reason why we have these spillover effects, which is where even though the sales is not present, it is going to show you some number. All right, for us to be able to solve the problem, what we are going to do is play a little trick in the calendar table. What we're going to do is we're going to make a flag and the flag is going to take a look at every single date that we have and see that if the date is surpassing the last date in the sales table or not. So let's just do some work right here. So I'm going to right click here and make a new column. And in the column, I'm just going to say sales present check. That can be the name of the column. And first of all, I will want to find out that what's the last date or what's the max date in the sales table sales date column. So uh, I'm going to say something like, hey, why don't you find the max of the sales table and the date column? Close the bracket and press enter. I do get 29th of August, but I don't really want to end it abruptly on the 29th of August. I at least want to push it to the 31st of August. So I'm going to wrap this around in the EO month function. So EO month, which is end of month, and I will push it to the end of month of the current month. Zero means the current month. One means the next month. If I do that, it's going to come up to the 31st of August, again, 2008, sorry, 2012. Well, and now what I'm going to see that, hey, I want to make a comparison that, hey, is this date smaller uh, than this particular date or not? If it is smaller, the sales is present. If it's not smaller, the sales is not present. So I will write something like this. Hey, calendar date. I use less than or equal to this particular date, the largest date in the sales table or not. And I'm going to get a bunch of trues and falses. Now, obviously, for all the months which are beyond August, September, October, November and December, they are going to show me the false and the rest of the months are definitely going to show me the true, which is fine. Now, if we just go back to our sales YTD calculation and I just mentioned that as a filter, our problem is solved. So if you go ahead and write that a calculate function and in the calculate function I will just maybe have my calculation right here and the filter is nothing but hey please take a look at the column that I have created and that should result as a true so uh, the check column uh, you can just write it because the column itself is giving you a true and false you don't have to say equals true that's going to work just fine close the bracket and press enter and you're going to see all of these they are just vanished because for September October November and December this value is false. Now, if I just commit to this formula, press OK, these values are gone. Let's take a look at one more example of a similar problem. So oftentimes you're going to find that you are doing um, last year calculation. So again, I have total sales, but I want to calculate sales for last year. And that's a very simple formula. I can drag that over to my visual. And again, you're going to see that the sales last year is also showing you the numbers where the current year sales is not present, although that is absolutely correct because the last year sales was there, current year is not there, that's fine. 
But this is going to create troubles, especially when you're doing growth calculations, because to be able to calculate growth, you need two numbers. You need the current year number and you need the last year number. If any of the number is missing, the growth calculation is obviously going to give you an error. So we can do the same technique in this particular uh, function as well. I can just go ahead and say something like, hey, last year calculation, I can say, hey, calculate. And I can just maybe say, hey, please take a look at the check column. Uh, and then that's it, press enter. Good to go. And this also vanishes. And I just have the sales present up until the last date of the sales table. At this point in time, I'm sure you have understood that these things are working and you've also understood the technique, but you may not have understood that why do we have to do the double calculate? Like I mean, calculate inside of a calculate. What's the need of the nested calculate? Let me try to help you understand that. Whenever you're trying to apply filters, remember that the filters come from outwards to inwards, especially when you're designing the formula. That means that this filter is going to have priority as compared to this particular filter. So think about it. If I just go back to my sales table, and in the sales table, I apply obviously a filter of a true. So I just click right here and I apply the true filter, click on OK. And now I have all the dates of 2012 present. If these 2012 dates, which are only up until August, are then taken to the last year, obviously I'm going to get the eight months of last year and not the entire last year. And that's the reason why the nested calculate helps us prioritize the filters. That means we want to apply the check filter first and then the last year filter, and that actually solves the problem. All right, that's been it. Let me know how did you find this one. Do you struggle with such problems in Power BI, and how have you been solving it? I'd love to know in the comments. And before you go, I'd like to give a big shout out about my DAX and my Power Query, and of course, my M language training courses, in case you're interested to build structured understanding of how Power BI works, how calculations work, how can you modify a calculation, be confident in solving your own problems, I would highly recommend that you please do check out my course you are going to benefit a lot. That's been it. Thanks so much for watching and I will catch you guys in the next one of course. Cheers and bye now.